So I have made a lot of beet kvass. It is a wonderful, beautiful ferment. It is simple. And if you're new to wild fermentation, I highly recommend you give it a go. Sure, it can just be salt and beets, but if you have my other recipe, I also have a sweet version in my book and bring in back bacteria, check it out. This one, it's just salt and beets, pretty simple. But if you know the process of wild fermentation, the better you become at it, the better the process will be for you and the better everything's gonna taste for you. So, let's dump the one bad boy up. Pretty. So you can still see it bubbling to the top there. And that's exactly what we want. Lots of those little bubbles forming. That is exactly what we want there. Whole bunch of guys rushing to the top. This one is still going to the top there. And that's what we want. So let's we'll strain it and then put it into jars. So there's absolutely no right or wrong way to do this. So I'm going to strain all of this into a bowl and discard these beets here. You could eat them if you want, sure. I'm not gonna throw them away, I'm gonna eat them. But we want them out of the drink because we're making a beverage, right? So I have a little mesh strainer. You can use a cheesecloth or coffee filters, doesn't matter. Just so we don't get any chunks of those beets into our beverage there. We're just gonna strain it all out and into the bowl. And whenever I get done, I'll show you. So as I explained in my book, beet kvass is actually a really good blood cleanser. It's good getting in there, cleaning out, you know, so really good for cutting the sugar cravings. If you crave sugar really bad, beet kvass is really good at coming in there and getting rid of some yeast and fungi. You have candida really bad. Do you need you some beet kvass? And I just made a mess. Okay, so I got my handy Danny. Spoon. Since I'm making a mess and every bit of this is precious, you don't want to lose any bit of it. So I just strained out the beets after the fermentation process. You can put this in any jar you like. If you want it more bubbly, more soda poppy, you need to put it in a swing top lid. Now it can't, it's still going to be acidic and all, but if you're wanting like that real soda pop kick, definitely put it in a swing top lid to get that. So how much should you drink? You don't need more than a shot glass. Cheers. Then again, if you're like me and you love to ferment and your body is used to a lot of ferments, feel free to have a little bit more. You know that when you ferment something, it allows for a whole host of beautiful wild bacteria to take over in the process of wild fermentation, aka lactobacillus, to come in and give microbes to, and then when you drink it, it goes into your gut. And then if you continue, to consume fermented beverages or foods, guess what? You are gonna have one heck of an immunity.